Welcome back to another tutorial. This time I'm going to go over the material tooltip. This is a request from Hamish from SHFR. You may know some of these things, but there are um, just going to be some tips and tricks throughout that may be helpful. So keep watching and find out how to use the material tooltip. Let's get started. Over in smooth POV mode, you can see I've got some objects arranged, including an elephant and a lion, some cubes over there that I'll talk about later. And uh, we're going to edit the materials of all of these objects and show you how that works. So let's get started. So the first thing to do is find the material tooltip. I have one here, but I'm going to show you where it is. Inside your event tree, there is a folder called Essential Tools. And in that folder, there's this gray tip here that looks exactly like this. And that's the material tooltip. So just double click that and it will spawn in the world. Once it's in the world, you can equip it like any other tool. And then when it's equipped, let's get started. So the first thing that you can do is you can extract the material from an object by pointing at it and pushing secondary. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the lion here. So I'm pointing my tool at the lion and I'm pushing secondary. And you'll see a sphere jumped out of the middle of nowhere and has um, appeared in my tool. And it sort of looks like a lion. I can then, once this material is in the tooltip, I can apply that material to any object in the scene. So here I can hit this square, the sphere, the floor, the cylinder, even the elephant up there, and apply all the materials uh, all the properties of this material to that. I can also undo that, which I'm going to do because not everything's alone. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another material. So I'm going to take this ball out. Once you, um, you just grab it out like a normal object, you can leave them floating in the world. You can also put them on your tool shelf here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the elephant. And again, I'll apply the elephant to the square and the sphere. Let's take the elephant out, put that on the tooltip as well. Now we can also grab the white material here that's on this sphere and then reapply that to the shapes in the scene. That's grabbing materials and using them. Let me just get rid of these ones on uh, my tool shelf at this one here. You'll notice that when I delete the material, it doesn't unapply from the elephant and the lion, and that's because um, Neos will try and keep a reference to the material existing even if you delete all the material orbs it's through so if something's using it then the material won't be deleted the next thing to know is how to create your own material so with the tooltip equipped you can open up the uh, hand menu scroll to create new and then this menu will appear and you can pick a material that you want to use here we're just going to go with pbs metallic this isn't a tutorial on the various material types but uh, that will be coming later so for now pbs metallic once you've clicked on this, you'll get this new inspector window and also a fresh uh, white ball here. So we can put that into the tooltip here and I can then look at this inspector and start editing properties about it. Properties are very complicated on materials. For now, let's just go ahead and edit the albedo color, this albedo color slot here. To do that, just click the white box and then choose any color. So I'm going to go for a blue and hit OK. And close out this inspector and then I'm going to randomly apply this to a few shapes in my collection. I can also apply it to the elephant, that square there, whatever I want. Let's say I'm now not happy with the blue color and I want to make it red instead. I can open up the hand menu, scroll to edit, and click that, and the material properties will open for the blue material. And I can click the blue square here and change it to a red one. You'll notice now that all of the shapes that were blue are now red. Let's say I didn't want that and I actually wanted some to be red and some to be blue. The way you can do that is by creating a copy of the material. So if you open up the hand menu again and you hit create copy, you'll see that there is a second red sphere that appears. This is a direct copy of the red sphere that's on everything. So I'm going to put this original red sphere to one side, put this new red sphere inside, hit edit and make it blue again. Yeah, OK. And now you'll see I have a red sphere and a blue sphere and that the objects in the scene are red, they're not blue. You can then apply the blue, swap out the blue for the red and apply the red and keep going like that. These materials aren't that interesting though. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these materials. There's a bunch that you can see inside Neos Essentials materials. So here's a nice brick texture and I can put this inside and I can apply this to various things. Kind of looks like a pretzel on that uh, a torus there. 
which is making me hungry, but there you go. I can also edit this material, so if I edit this, you'll see there's a bunch of pictures on this material. These are called maps. We'll go over those when I go over each uh, material type. But for now, just know that they are controlling what the material looks like. I can also change the albedo color here, so it can have red bricks. That's it for creating and copying materials. Let's go on to converting materials. So if, say for example, I didn't want this brick material to be um, the PBS metallic type. I wanted it to be flat lit tune or something like that. I can open up my hand menu, go to convert to, which is the very last option, and then choose a new one. So here we'll choose flat lit tune. And now there'll be a new material orb here, which is the flat lit tune version. And I can put that into my uh, tool. And now I can apply that one. Actually, that's pre-applied, of course, because I converted it. So it'll keep the old one, but it also apply that new converted one to all the objects that previously had the old one. That's it for conversion. The next thing we're going to do is going to go over the um, material modes. So it will start in ray mode. I've done this whole tutorial on object mode, but that doesn't actually matter. So we're going to go to ray mode. Ray mode is what its defaults to. And so you've been seeing ray mode. Um, but now we're going to go and switch to um, area mode. So by clicking ray mode, we can then switch to area mode. Area mode creates this sphere. It won't start out this big. You can actually increase or decrease that by winding this uh, dial in and out. Once this dial is to a size you would like, you can put in a material. So I'm going to put in this blue cloth. And you can go up to objects and kind of paint. So anything that is inside this sphere when I hold trigger will then be turned into that material. Super useful for quickly applying material to a lot of objects. To go over the next option, I'm going to need to go over to this specially designed setup over here, which is called object global mode. In this setup, I have five cubes that are blue. They're this blue material here. And they are parented under a parent object, which has the object root property in it. And what this sets up is a hierarchy, where the root of this object is that parent, and uh, all these cubes are underneath it. And with that set up, if I put this red material in, and I make sure it's set to object global mode, I can click one blue cube, and it will apply the red material to all of them, because it's replacing the material in the object. Um, every time there's a blue material, it's replacing it with the red material throughout the object. So if I had 20 cubes or 50 cubes in there, it would do the same. That's useful if you've got a really complicated object that's got like one part you want to change. Like imagine a car where you want to change just the chrome trim to be a different type of chrome. You could do that with object global mode quite well. So now if I grab the blue sphere and put this back in, I can then change that back, and that's because the object global mode is being set. I'm going to put the red one back in and change it back to ray mode so you can see the difference. So here in ray mode, I clicked a sphere, sorry, a cube, and it only changed that cube. So let's put the red one back in again and go back to object global mode one more time and click this blue cube, and you'll see it changes them all to red. So that's object global mode for you. The final one is scene global mode. For scene global mode, we need to make a bit of a mess. So here I'm going to put everything to this blue uh, cloth material. And by everything, I mean everything, because it's the last one we're going to show off. And then I'm going to go ahead and swap that out and replace it with something really obvious. So we'll go for this big pink material here. And I'm going to set to scene global mode, which is the last one with a star on it. And now when I click the blue cube here, everything that was the blue material is now the pink material. And that's because it's replacing everything in the world with the material I use. So again, I can pick up this yellow material, shoot the floor, and now everything's yellow. This brick material that we'd made earlier, shoot that, now everything's bricks. That's scene global mode. You notice that these aren't affected, and the reason they aren't affected is because it's only going to replace stuff that is already that material. So it has to be this brick material for it to be affected. 
to illustrate that here, I can switch back to ray mode briefly, and we can set a few of these to this blue, including the floor, and then grab this yellow again, and go back to scene global mode, and click one of these spheres, and you'll see the floor change, those spheres changed, but the brick cubes over here didn't change, these didn't change, and neither did the elephant or the lion. And that's because of uh, it only replaces the material that you're aiming at. So we were aiming at the uh, blue cloth, and it replaced it. That's all the tips and hints I'm going to go over on the material tooltip. There is a lot more to cover. Please do let me know what you want to see. Um, maps and uh, texture maps and render layers and all sorts of stuff like that and alpha transparency there are all sorts of things we can talk about i just wanted to provide you with a brief overview of where everything was and how everything worked on the tooltip itself let me know if you like and i will speak to you soon Bye bye